Unreal. Incredible win. Absolutely incredible win. Incredible. Incredible. Absolutely incredible win. The Greenbrier was worth it. Ah, Bo. Bo. Hang on to that ball, Bo. Bo Nix will go shake the hand of Aaron Rodgers. Wow. Turn on the smoke machine, yo. Turn it on, man. The Greenbrier was worth it. $2 million win right there. Damn, man. That is nuts. Wow. The Denver Broncos beat the New York Jets 10 to 9 in a less than a, a stellar game offensively for the Broncos, where it was three and outs, three and outs, three and outs, crazy on the three and outs. Bo Nix through three quarters was in a minus territory in terms of pass yardage. Um, we're waiting for word at this time about Tyler Bidet. Uh, who had to be strapped to a card and a backboard, and that was very, very scary. And Javante Williams, you know, uh, took control of things. But it was sloppy, and it came down to a missed field goal attempt by the Jets, but they missed it. Will Lutz missed a 50-yarder. It was just an ugly-ass game. But the Broncos win, and that's all that matters. It's literally all that matters. An improbable victory for the Broncos as they were seven point or more underdogs, depending on where you were looking at things. And they win 10 to nine. Let me give you some of the numbers here. Um, and it, it's not pretty. It's not a pretty win, but who cares? You can win close games on the road. Bo Nix, 12 of 25 for 60 yards. One touchdown. He got his first touchdown as a pro. A throw to Cortland Sutton, who did a magnificent job of keeping his feet in Javante Williams, 16 carries 77 yards. And he was not the plan for the day. It was going to be Tyler Bidet who only had one carry he fumbled on the carry and got hurt, which is terrible. Jaleel McLaughlin, nine carries for 46 yards, but the Broncos ran for 126 yards, 31 for 126, 4.1 per. Meanwhile, the jets 23 carries for 64 yards, Aaron Rodgers, 24, 42, uh, for 225 yards. Sloppy game. Star of the game for the Broncos is Cortland Sutton, who only had three catches but on nine targets. And again, you got to understand the minus territory for Bo Nix was crazy. After Cortland Sutton, three yards for Burton, three yards for Javante Williams, minus two for Troy Franklin, and minus four for Tyler Bidet. This was a crazy game. Crazy game offensively. I mean, you only had 60 yards of receiving, 60 yards of receiving, and you won 60 yards, and you won. I, 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 I can't even believe it, but it's the Broncos defense that deserves the massive amount of praise as they had five sacks on Aaron Rodgers, eight tackles for a loss, and the Broncos offensive line did not give up a sack. Again, they didn't give up a sack. There were seven TFLs, but no sacks. The weather was absolutely brutal, and the Broncos figured a way, man. They had to have some luck on their side, but they got a little bit unlucky, too, as they ran out of challenges, and they would have had a fumble go their way had they had a challenge left to challenge the play, and they didn't. I can't look at anything positive on the offensive side aside from the fact they just didn't quit, and they did stick with running the ball. You know, 31 rushes to 25 passes. They recognized what the situation was. And you know what? <laughs> Whatever, man. Bo Nix did enough. It wasn't great, okay? It wasn't great. It wasn't even close to the complete game they played against the Bucks last week. No, I mean, it was brutal. The three and outs were heavy. Uh, the stats are not going to look great. But again, look what the Broncos did defensively to the Jets. So, listen, man, a win is a beautiful thing, as Dick McPherson once said at Syracuse, and that's all that matters. 
I'm looking at the three and outs. We got one three and out, two three and out, three, four with a fumble, five. Uh, let's go. So five three and outs in the first quarter. Then we go 11-yard touchdown drive. That was key. 11 play, 87-yard, 527 touchdown drive. That was the difference in the game. That was the difference in the game, and then they got a field goal on top of that too. Broncos had a lot of opportunities, but so did the Jets. The Jets had the ball at the Broncos' one-yard line and couldn't score on first down. They had to settle for a field goal. Um, the Broncos obviously were missing things left and right. I mean, it was just brutal. Uh, 12 first downs for the Broncos, but it took forever to get one. Three of 14 on third down, but the Jets were four of 17. Total yards, 186 for the Broncos, 248 for the Jets. Not very impressive in passing yards, 184 to 60. Bo Nix only had 60 passing yards, and they won, but the Broncos more than doubled their rushing yards, 126 to 64, and the Jets were a disaster as a team with 13 penalties for 90 yards. So that was the difference. Turnovers were a push. Uh, both teams had a turnover. Both teams lost a turnover that they had. So that didn't seem to matter all that much. Um, and the Broncos come home from the Greenbrier singing a tune, man. So you have both the Buffs and the Broncos. Second week in a row, they both get wins. I think you've got to be thrilled with this for the Broncos. Absolutely thrilled. 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 And it took a missed field goal that could have won the game for the Jets, but they freaking missed it. So there you go. Let's miss this one. The Jets miss one. It's a one-point game. We scored a touchdown. You didn't. That's it. Broncos go to two and two, and it's a brand new season. And Sean Payton said going into these two road games, we'll look in the mirror and we'll see what kind of team we are. Well, you're a pretty tough team. You're a pretty tough team. And you're an excellent defensive team. You've got some growing pains with a rookie quarterback who didn't have his best day on a day that nobody was having a great day offensively because the weather was so terrible and the ball was so slick. So the Broncos win, the Broncos win, the Broncos win. And that is absolutely outstanding.